This is the regular Sunday service for the congregation of Theodore the Studite. The Sevelod chaplain has been leading worship here for the last two years. Before that, he was the official spokesman for the Russian Orthodox Church. Is what happened to this church fairly typical of what happened to churches during Absolutely. the Soviet time? Uh, most of the churches here in the center of Moscow in all of Russia were lost in 1920s and 1930s. How long did it take to reconstruct this? About 15 years. Yeah. Almost from nothing. Like most churches in Moscow, Chaplin's was largely destroyed under communism. After the revolution of 1917, the Soviets moved to stamp out organized faith. They stripped religion from education, arrested clergymen, and ordered the destruction of many of Russia's grand cathedrals, including this one, Christ the Savior, which was blown up to make room for a public swimming pool. Chaplin's a polarizing hardliner. He lost his job in part because he openly criticized Kremlin officials over what he saw as their lack of piety. But when he was in office, he participated in the church's latest transformation, a close alliance with Vladimir Putin. We were very much oppressed during the Soviet rule. Now the church is free, and uh, what is even more important, we do have an opportunity nowadays to uh, uh, try to influence uh, different spheres of the life of the society. Is Vladimir Putin good for the church here? I don't think he is the best possible choice, but uh, he is the best of, of the options we've had uh, since 1970. In Moscow today, the church seems to be everywhere. Under Putin, huge swaths of land have been transferred back to religious ownership, and thousands of new churches have been built or restored at a rate of almost three a day by church figures. More than 70% of Russians identify as Russian Orthodox, up from 30% at the end of the Soviet Union. And the church's conservative social values are now becoming law as the government clamps down on free expression, gay rights, and competing religious sects. There is a kind of an agreement between uh, Putin's administration and, uh, and, uh, and the patriarchy. Boris Falikov, a professor at the Center for Religious Studies at the Russian State University, says this transformation is more than just a religious awakening. What is Putin trying to gain and get out of the church relationship? Church is still popular among uh, the majority of Russian people, and uh, it makes him legitimate, you know, in their eyes. He's supported by the church, it's good. At a certain time, he mm, decided to turn to the right, it was his famous speech in Munich when he said that we are surrounded by enemies, we are betrayed by the Western countries. And it was the beginning of the ideology of, uh, of, uh, of the fortress. And that's how the ideology of traditional values came to the surface. The alliance has proven mutually beneficial for Putin and the church, but it's also created new strains. Victoria Miranova was raised Russian Orthodox, but she rarely attended church. Then, in 2015, church came to her. The government designated the small park outside her home as the site of a future chapel, part of a project to construct 200 Orthodox churches across Moscow. Miranova began a weekly vigil to protest the parish, which still happens every Sunday. Они считают, что если ты не хочешь храм в Торфянке, значит ты враг русской православной церкви. This all started because the government gave this land to the church. So. Who's really the responsible party? Is it the government or is it the church? Конечно, правительство. Что я могу думать, выходя вот сюда в парк и наблюдая эту картину? Я могу думать только о том, что это специальная вот эта провокация со стороны лиц, которые прикрываются православной верой, а на самом деле занимаются, в общем-то, фактическим захватом. What do you think that Putin wants from the church? Власти, конечно. 
the very idea of separation of church and state is alien to the orthodox civilization. It's a peculiarity of the West. There's another interpretation, a more that there's a more cynical calculation on, on Putin's part, that he sees in the church a vehicle to consolidate and expand power in the way he would like to. Well, it's an explanation, uh, a very simplified explanation, which we uh, often hear and see in the West. You don't buy it. I think, I think Putin needed to adapt to uh, his own people. Lenin, Khrushchev, Gorbachev didn't listen to the people and failed. And Putin? We'll see.